Hi Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your May 7th, 2024 new moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously, and it gets this channel seen by the YouTube algorithm. So thank you so very much for doing so. And before we dive any deeper into what the cards have to say, like deeper, like <laughs> laying them out, I guess, that's what we're talking about here. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. My website, daneharttarot.com has been updated. There's new things on there, new prices. So check it out if you want to, don't if you don't. But I think you all will be pleasantly surprised. I have been hearing from Spirit over and over and over again in my dreams. And so I, I did what Spirit said. So I hope I hope you guys like it. So let's see what the tarot has to say. All right. I love that everything just fell right out in like clumps. <laughs> so that is that is great. Spirit is quite chatty right now. So we are crowned with the the strength card reverse. So this is very much an energy of might equals right. This new moon is in Taurus. This new moon is on the 7th of May. The new moon is when we set our intentions. And I would highly recommend having a moon journal and just set down like say May 7th or whenever the new moon is where you live. May 7th, you know, these are my intentions. Also on a separate piece of paper, write down your frustrations. Write down the things that you want to change. And and, and and destroy it, you know, sink it in a tub of, of water, you know, scrunch it up under under the tap, um, shred it, burn it, release it. Release your fears, your anxieties, everything that is holding you back, holding you down during this time, release it on this new moon. That will be highly beneficial. And then put down your goals, put down what you want to achieve. And I used to think that a new moon was for was the goals for the full moon. And you know, the full moon is only, you know, a few weeks from the new moon. So it's not a lot of time. I think it's like 15 days. I can be wrong about this, but it's not a lot of time. But the new moon that we have here on the 7th of May are the intentions that we lay down in a very manifestative, manifestive, manifestive, I've manifested. I don't know if those words I'm making up, but in a time of great manifestation, you <laughs> know, that's a real word of, of Taurus. This is a Taurus time period. This is a Taurus new moon. And so the next full moon will be on November 15th or whenever, whenever it is where you live in the world. And you will see the intentions that you set, the goals that you set, the way that you work towards them will be in the next six months. And you will see a manifestation of what it is that you really desire. So just be mindful about this or mindful of what you're focusing on because we can, we can kind of manifest what we're afraid of during this time because it's going to be what's ever in the front of our mind. So strength here we're really going to think, okay, might equals right. Like I'm going to push through. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to go after. I'm going to make this happen. That isn't necessarily going to be the way that you achieve your goals and you get what it is that you want. A gentler approach is going to be a lot better. We can also be having a bit of difficulty with a with a Leo energy time frame, July 23rd to August 22nd. That might be a little bit of a tricky time frame around our goals and what we want. With the seven of pentacles, be patient. Be patient. You're not going to want to be. Nobody ever wants to be. But be patient with the seeds that you are planting, with what you are growing, with the way that you want to move things forward. Then we have the Six of Pentacles reversed. This is going to be a time where not everything is in balance. Not everything is in harmony. And we're going to have to look at what isn't in balance from what our inner child wants or from what it is that we want to develop inwardly, what we have had our dreams set on since we were little and what we feel is being given to us during this time by others. We then have the lovers. This is Gemini energy, a time frame of May 21st to July 20th. This is very lucky energy for us. So if we are if we have Gemini energy in our chart, if we have Gemini energy in our life, that is going to be very very good energy around us. And if we are looking for love, this is going to be a moon where I highly recommend, you know, writing down what you want in a partner, writing down what you want or from the lover you already have, and really focusing on growing that love, growing that connection, really stepping into the power of of self and of sensuality of self. This is going to be a time where it is going to be a bit of battle between lust and love. So do be aware of this opening up your heart, you know, knowing that your angels are guiding you, but say to yourself, what do I love? What do I love? What do I love? And I write that three times down on your, in your moon journal, you know, and if you want me, 
I, I, I never thought about merchandise, but I'm thinking, ooh, like this moon journal sounds like such a good idea. And I, I don't know if there's one like what Spirit is showing me on, on the market because I just don't know. But if you're interested in a moon journal, let me know because merchandise, though that sounds very capitalistic, is um is, is such a good idea. <laughs> it's such a good idea. So here with lovers, embracing what you love, embracing what you desire in your life, moving forward in the battle, in, in the battle and in the balance of the sacred feminine, sacred masculine aspect of yourself, which has been at battle during this time. And it's very interesting that the lovers is duality, right? It's represented by the twins. And then Pisces, you are represented by the fish. So you have two fish and the twins are, of course, two people. So there's a sense here of the emotion pulling you forward and a duality to what you want and what you're going after. Okay. Be very mindful of your inner voice. It's very interesting that we have Gemini energy in the upright position. And then we have air sign energy, which is Gemini, Libra, Aquarius with the King of Swords saying, hey, be mindful about this. So be mindful about hurtful, hateful words. Be mindful about cutting to the heart of things and believing negativity. Also be mindful of a sharpness and a frustration of voice that's going to come out during this time. We are going to have a tendency to believe the negative because why the heck else is everybody saying it instead of looking at the positive to us. The King of Swords is one of the most masculine of the kings, the King of Wands and the King of Swords. There's a fierceness, a ferocity, a determination, a focus of the King of Swords that comes forward. We need to embrace our voice, what we desire. We need to cut through doubts, fears, negativities, hurts, pains, disappointments, looking at the transformation of ourselves, the battles that we have fought, the past and the present coming together. And that's going to be a little bit tricky. We're going to have a tendency to believe other people's words over our own voice or over our own intuition. And there's something about our mind being blocked to us. Mm -hmm. And then we have the two of cups, which is the minor arcana lover's card. This is healing. This is healing, beautiful love coming forward. And there's, there's a sense of like, I don't want to heal from this. And it can be a negativity, a hurt, a harshness that somebody said to us, a, a seed that somebody planted that made us think we weren't worthy. And it doesn't matter if this happened, you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, it, it still, it still stinks. And it's like, no, I'm not going to forget this. And spirit's like, why? Because it's only holding you back. The other person, they don't really care. It's, it's, it's not their thing. So here looking at ourselves and saying, what is holding me back? And during this moon, during this time of intense and powerful manifestation, we also need to focus on healing because there, there's a sense, you know, that battle between lust and love comes forward and it's like, okay, well, how do I embrace where I need to be and how I need to be for me? The empress is creativity. You know, the empress is, is healing, it's creativity, it's birthing forth from you, you know, what you desire in your life. It isn't actually giving birth though. It can be interpreted that way, but it's moving forward towards your dreams, towards what you de desire. It's spreading your wings, it's flying, it's, it's seeing yourself, it's embracing your voice, it's knowing what it is that you want. There's a fierceness to, to the empress. It always makes me think of Empress Theodora, right? And Empress Theodora, the story of Empress Theodora just Justin Justinius, I always get his name wrong, um, is just spectacular because she, she started off as a courtesan, right? And and she rose to the rank of empress. So that's just a fantastical story right there. And and she was a real person. And and there's there's data of that. Now there's a story that as Rome was burning, the emperor was was hopping into his boat and saying, That's it, I'm out. And she said, Absolutely no. You know, she had gut and gumption and she said no. If you get in that boat, then I will rule and you will run away. And there's there's a sense here of a ferocity to the Empress that we don't always equate with the sacred feminine energy that the Empress represents. Um, Empress is always supposed to be behind the scenes, right? But there's a power to behind the scenes, you know, and that we don't we don't look at. We don't we don't see it. We want to think, oh, the one right up front, that's the most powerful one. But but sometimes the Empress, the one that, you know, can be a little bit more in the shadows, even though she is the Empress, so the shadow isn't very big at all, is, is quite intense. And so there is a sense here of owning what it is that we want to build, what it is that we want to create, how it is that we want to move forward. And then we have the Eight of Cups, we're afraid. There's a fear that's going to come forward during this time with the Eight of Cups. And it's like, how do I choose walking away from what I thought could be something perfect or beautiful or exactly what I had dreamed of? And how do I walk away and choose me? How? what I'm supposed to nurture and I'm supposed to create and I'm supposed to build this forward and love is supposed to conquer all. Sometimes 
And it sounds, it isn't terrible to say, sometimes love can't change a person. You know, it just can't. You can't love somebody into, into doing better for themselves. They have to choose that for themselves. They have to love themselves into doing better for them. And that's going to be an important thing during this time, healing a connection a moving forward with strength. There, there is a way during this time we're going to think, okay, I can just bulldoze it. And that's not going to work for us, Pisces. So let's see what spirit has to say. And if you're interested in entering to receive a free reading, put a flower in the comment box below. A person will be chosen at random and announced on Sunday. So hit the bell notification because there is no rhyme or reason when the, those videos come up. All right. So, oh, and it will only be announced through a video on this channel. Do not be fooled by anybody. Okay. We have harmony and we have blissful. So spirit is saying embrace harmony and fill your soul with bliss. Fill yourself with bliss. Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss, right? And this is going to be a time where we need to follow our bliss. We need to say, what is it that I desire? And I'm always, I'm thinking right now of the, the, the Gnostic story of Thecla. And Thecla was, it, it was called the book of, of, of Paul and Thecla, right? And Thecla, she, she was a ministry of, of early Christianity. Again, whether you believe in early Christianity or not, or Christianity or not, it really doesn't matter. The story is just, it is amazing. So they're going and they're, and they're preaching and Thecla is, is persecuted because not only is she a woman, right? But she is also, you know, preaching Christianity. And she winds up, she winds up getting, you know, thrown to be eaten by the lions. Paul always like hides away in the shadows, always scurries away. It makes me think of, of the Empress. It's like, you have to stand tall. You have to stand strong. You cannot scurry away. And it's going to be the sacred energy, sacred feminine energy within you. And it doesn't matter if you are, are feminine or, or not at all. The sacred feminine energy within you needs to stand tall and firm and be acknowledged within your soul, within your being. Because Paul, you know, scurries away and Thecla is, is literally thrown to the lions and all the female lions protect her and won't let the male lions, you know, Take her. So the Romans are all freaked out and they say, okay, go away. You know, fine. Combat by animal didn't work. Then she's arrested again. She's thrown into, she's going to be thrown into a, a big pool of sharks. Lightning bolt comes down, fries all the sharks. And so again, the, the, the trial by animal does not work in the Roman Colosseum, you know, favor. And so she's let th through again, happens three times. And it is, and, and then she jumps in that pool, right? That has been struck by lightning. All the sharks die and she baptizes herself. So there's a real sense of owning your destiny, owning your strength, taking action and going against the grain of what is expected. You know, it's what, what is expected, the role that you are supposed to take on and the role that your soul knows that you are supposed to step into. Finding your harmony, moving forward in your determination and focus, filling yourself with bliss. Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss follow your bliss. Not every moment of every day, he did clarify. You know, you can't do it every moment of every day, but know what fills you with joy and then follow that forward. And that is going to be a very important, very beautiful thing. It moves us then to our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guide, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. This is holistic health reverse. This is one of my favorite cards. So with it reversed, there's a blockage in our root chakra and it's around us listening to our bodies over what makes us healthy, what, what helps us, what our body responds good to and what our body, body doesn't respond good to. You know, I it was funny. I was talking with my mom. I always talk with my mom. right? And, and I said to her, I, I just really like eating vegetables now with salt, the, you know, a salad with salt on it or, or vegetables with salt on it. And I thought, I always thought people who, who said they liked eating like that, they were just liars. <laughs> I really didn't think that anybody liked just the flavor of, of vegetables or of salads that way. And so with holistic health, it's listening to your body and finding like, you know, maybe sugar doesn't sit well with you. I find it doesn't sit well with me. I am drawn to it. You know, I would love to have more. I would love to have ice cream, right? Or more ice cream. And I steal little scoops of it here and there. And my stomach reacts poorly. So here it's like, listen to your body, listen to your body, even though in your head, you're like, oh, I really want that burst of sugar. or I really want that burst of, of caffeine or whatever. Know that your body doesn't respond well to it. Listen to yourself. We, we have so much going on in our food that kind of going back to basics can seem terrible. <laughs> it can seem terrible, but it is going to be needed. And then, you know, moving our bodies, even just visualizing moving our bodies. If, if the actual movement of the body right now is, is too hard for us, that is going to be a very important thing. Seeing red energy flowing through us, the red energy of, of the heart, the red energy of the root chakra, 
you know, planting us, connecting us with the ground, connecting us with our energy forward. That is going to be a powerful thing. And that is a powerful thing. It moves us to our energy to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. The Hermit Reverse. We need to be mindful. We need to pull in and we need to sit quietly with ourselves. We need to sit under the power of this moon, Pisces, and, and soak in the stars, so, soak in the silence. We're not going to want to at all. This is going to be a time where we need to be mindful of being, you know, you know, kind of like the busy bee, the social butterfly, the, the person going from here to there to here to there, which sounds great, but we're running away from our own shadow during this time. And that's not going to be cool. This is also Virgo energy, which is our sister sign. So it can be that there's like this energy that knows the inner working of us that's kind of calling us out. So just be aware of this. It's, it's a little bit harsh. It's a little bit intense. Virgo time frame is, of course, August 23rd to September 22nd. Again, watch out. We're going to think we can be bulldozers. Pisces, we are not meant to be bulldozers. Nobody ever says, oh, hook up the fish. We're going to bulldoze, right? So here, just be aware of this. Be aware of moving more slowly. Be aware that the harshness of the light of day, right, is not going to give you the clarity that you need. It's going to happen more in, in the quiet of night. So being aware of that is going to be super important for us. When it comes to the seven of pentacles, we need to be patient. We need to know that fruit takes time to ripen. Our desires, our passions, what we want for our life, it takes time. And as we step into what we want for ourselves, it is going to take time. And I know we're going to be thinking, and we are thinking, how much more time? Like, how much time will this actually take? And, and Spirit is saying, here, it depends on the dream. And it depends on how long we nurture that dream, how long we move things forward, also how we adapt. You know, sometimes we have a dream and it's, it's limited by the by the vocabulary that we have, by the world that we grew up in, by the people who raised us, by what we have seen. And our dream might be so astounding that we don't have the vocabulary for it. We know we want it to be big so we can think, oh, movie star, you know, rock star, you know, that type of stuff that little kids want to be. But it is saying here, look at the essence of what that dream is, of what the dreams were that you had when you were small and and the world was opened. So it's it's knowing that sometimes also it's us finding the, the right path, even though we had these dreams, we thought, oh, that's the path. Mm, no, it was the the language that we had at the moment. With the six of pentacles reverse, I like that we're doing the countdown from seven of pentacles to six of pentacles. Something is out of balance here. It's going to be around money or what we value as much as money, the way our inner child connects with the adult we are now, or the way that we're almost kind of waiting for permission for something, like somebody to to grant permission or pull us along the way or give us that that helping hand that, yeah, okay, that's great. But it's, it's kind of sitting here and saying, how do I balance it for me? How do I move forward and do what is right, what is fair for me? Embracing love, embracing our passion seeing that our angels are guiding us, but really stepping forward in love and not confusing it for lust. It will be very, very easy for us to confuse love and lust. So just being mindful about this during this time, stepping back, taking a beat, always taking a beat during the time leading up to this new moon and even a bit after, you know, saying, what is it that I want to manifest? What do I really love? What, you know, guides me forward? What, what brings joy into my soul? We are going to have very negative self-talk. And we can also really have a tendency to just believe the worst in us, what people say that it's nasty and cuts us to the quid and is just overwhelming. Be mindful about this because that's going to be the energy that we kind of draw to because we're going to be thinking, again, they're just saying the truth, right? I just need to know this. I just need to, to better myself or prepare or be perfect or be whatever it is that others think I'm supposed to be instead of saying, what is it that I want? And again, we can be very mean to ourselves. Well, I want to be X, Y, Z. And if I wasn't such a loser, I, I would be by now. No, you're on a journey. When you watch a movie, when everything goes perfectly for the person, it's a boring movie. You fall asleep. You don't want that in a book. It's like little kids' books even have, have struggle in them. Struggle makes us grow, right? And we can say, how much do I need to grow? Seriously, spirit. And, and that's fair. But with the king of swords, it's embracing our voice. It is knowing that we're having a bit of difficulty being able to articulate what we want. And so that's where the frustration and the fierceness comes through. I'm just going to plow fo forward. Spirit's like, no, sit with what you want. Sit and ask the question into the void of the universe, into the void of time, into the void of a new moon and say, what is it that I want? And see what comes forward. Write it down. Speak it down. 
However, you keep this moon journal. Let yourself be guided by it. With the two of cups, there's a rejection of a healing. There's a healing that's coming forward. And it's like, I'd rather be angry. And that's fair. You know, I'd rather be angry. I'd rather be hurt. Depending on what happened in your life journey, you know, people can be like, well, I would never be able to forget that. And that's okay. You're not as asking to forgive them. It's to forgive the time wasted being angry at them. You know, not be, yeah, I don't know how to put it in a way because there are some things that people have told me that my jaw is on the floor. Like, it's like, I can't believe, I can't believe you went through that. Right. And I don't know if I would be able to be like, oh, love and peace and hope and joy, you know, type thing, you know, Pollyanna, your way out of it. But here with the two of cups, there's a healing. There's a coming together of the sacred feminine, sacred masculine of yourself. There's a claiming of your power. There's a claiming of your angels that needs to happen. And there's looking others dead in the eye and saying, no, you don't get to have that power over me. You don't get to define me anymore. And you don't get to continue to ruin me. Do it out of spite. I mean, seriously. I know that might sound like a, a silly thing to say in, in a reading focused on healing and connecting. And, you know, I love it. Somebody said you should be an astral counselor. I think that is just the most beautiful thing out of ever. I love that. And here with the two of cups, it's like, do it out of spite. Heal yourself. Connect with the loving, beautiful energy of you because they don't get to take your life. They don't get to. And it brings us then to the empress. It brings us then to that creative powerful. I'm standing in my power. I know my worth. You leave, you run, fine, but I'm here. I'm creating. And I'm the one you thought was never going to be anything. The Eight of Cups. We're not ready to walk away from something yet. And it doesn't fit. It's not right. We know it's not right. It's like having a really pretty pair of shoes. They pinch your toes. They kind of give you a headache, right? But they're so pretty and you spent so much money on them that you're going to wear them <laughs> and you're going to get your money's worth. But here it's like, oh, just let them go. Just let them go and, and see where the moon is taking you. See what is calling to you when you quiet yourself and step into yourself and say, okay, where is it that I need to be? What is it that I need for me? It moves us to our subconscious spirit message, which is focus. We're a little bit all over the place because focus is reverse. So just know that. Just know that kind of it's going to be like kind of like herding cats during this time to get us to focus, to get us to really sit and say, okay, this is what I want. We're always going to be having that energy of the the hermit of oh oh I could be doing this I could be doing that you know hermit reverse I don't I don't want to turn inward I don't want to to see it brings us then to our chakra energy which is divine wisdom and this is the the soul star chakra located 6 inches above our crown we are getting a lot of information from divinity from the universe from our angels and we need to download it. We need to connect with it. This is a time of great awakening for everybody. So this is a time where everybody feels like a peach, like a bruised peach. Like we, everybody can bruise as easily as a peach. And we're going to be like, oh, you know, everybody's so sensitive. Everything's so intense right now because everybody is either leveling up or actively denying leveling up. It brings us to the star, the energy to be mindful of. Now, this is Aquarius energy. So if you're born on the cusp with Aquarius, if you have Aquarius in your chart, be mindful. This part of your personality can be giving you some trouble right now. But the star is also, when we're told to be mindful of it, it's delusion and illusion. So be mindful of others' delusions and illusions. Be mindful of your own delusions and illusions. And, you know, it's not going to be just the thought of it. It then also has to be the action of it that moves you forward. And that's going to be really important. I know the star, when it says to be mindful of it, and when it's reversed is, is blunt and, and kind of harsh, but you know, it, it's a good reminder. I always find the star to be a good reminder because it can be in our head more like we're looking at something. It's, it's more in our head and the reality of it can be, can be a little bit diff difficult or it can be like, well, do I really want that if I'm not working towards it? But the idea of it, you know, is just kind of like tempting me. Do I need to, do I either need to, to work on it or do I need to say, no, that's not for me. It brings us then. <sighs> To the nine of pentacles and that's why the the star delusions and illusions is so is so prominent because the nine of pentacles is the nine of pentacles reversed it's being in the past it's being in the future but it's having a really hard time being in the here and now which is the star reversed right or to be mindful of has that that tendency we we are we, 
we're more inclined to dreams and we're more inclined to ideologies. We're more inclined to, to look at everything and say, well, it just has to be perfect. It just has to be the exact way that is imagined and not, not letting ourselves realize, oh, okay, there's fingerprints on everything and I have to respect the fingerprints. So here with the nine of pentacles, it is going to be difficult to stand in the here and now, but that's going to be our challenge. And also we can have a tendency because this is a, a Taurus new moon, we can have a tendency towards overindulgence, overindulgence in food, overindulgence in drink, overindulgence in in shopping, in in spending, in 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 relationships. Just know we can have a tendency towards overindulgence. So just be mindful about that. It's not saying you have to be austere because the the flip side the flip side of that is that we're very cold to luxury during this time. Very cold to a bit of pampering, taking things slow, moving forward more essentially in our own existence. That's that's a beautiful thing. But the overindulgence, we do have to be mindful of and not seeing all the hard work that we have done that has gotten us to this point. And there's also a sense of, of love coming in or looking at a, a sense of love again with lovers coming forward, a sense of love guiding us, spreading our wings, having us looking at things differently. And it can be just, you know, it could be, we can find guidance in a book that we're reading or in a movie that we're watching or a podcast that we're listening to or something that somebody says on the street and you're like, oh, wow, that makes so much sense. And it starts to open up new doors. So there's there's also a blockage around love here that we're going to start to see shattering a bit. And that can be in finding a relationship and that can be in you know strengthening the relationship we're already in. It all depends on where we are in our journey. All right, Pisces, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. And please note that this meditation and healing will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Pisces. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. Bye.